and they're about to go bankrupt. They're going to go belly up. They want to continue doing business. So they file Chapter 11, Reorganization of Bankruptcy. And what happens? You go to the airport. They still have the booth? Yes. They still have the uniforms for their agents? Yes. They're still taking, selling tickets and conducting commerce? Yes. Do they owe anyone? No. Do they have creditors? Yes. They reorganized. They have actually become like the creditor, and the creditor has become like the debtor in Chapter 11. All right? Did you have any more to say? Go ahead and come up here. And oh, okay. Make, make, uh, make sure you give your, uh, we, we did it on the first session. Uh, let me share with you what is going on and what the word exemption really means in the debt monetary system. All right? When we use our exemption, is the state corporation, the state of Texas corporation, is it receiving their taxes? Who can answer that? Yes, they are receiving taxes. When we pay in Federal Reserve note systems, I mean, there's this one line through the S, they get money of exchange. You look at modern money mechanics under the Federal Reserve, it's a 52-53 page uh, document, explaining that money of exchange over here and money of account is two different things. Okay, so we have negative and we have positive over here. Remember, it's all in this corporate fiction box here. All right. So here we are sovereign outside of here. All of our gold and silver was I've been taken by the system back in 33, 1933. And but so what do we have from the birth certificate? The birth certificate has an exemption. All that went on this side. What is an exemption? An exemption is money of exchange, just like gold or silver. It is our energy. All right? So they have what they call the Department of the Treasury over on this side. It has what is called exempt exchange items. All right? What is that? That is an instrument with our energy on it, the wet ink energy that they take. And now they can credit back to this debtor side, whoever is the creditor in this debtor side, all right, debit and credit over here, they can credit back by electronic funds transfer, EFT. When that exemption goes over here, what is our exemption? Anything with our wet ink on it. That's all they want. They don't care if it has bi colon in front of it. They don't care if it's an X. They don't care. They just want it. Well, the voucher, though. Now, if they can get over and above that, they can get us to take these debt instruments called notes, Federal Reserve notes, the word note, as you know, means promise to pay. So I promise to pay this restaurant. They take the promise to pay. They give it to their supplier, which is a wholesaler. They're promising to pay the wholesaler. The wholesaler promises to pay, to pay the farmer. Who's getting paid? Nobody. No one. It's all debt. OK? So we know that we are debt free by the blood covenant of Yahshua the Messiah, all right? So that's what he said 2,000 years ago. It is accomplished. It's finished. And he was in a debt monetary system called the Roman Empire. Pay tribute unto Caesar. All right? So it's all been accomplished. So what has happened is the father of lies, some call the father of lies Satan, whatever, you know, you can title that. It, it is a, a, a destroyed entity. Completely, completely uh, paralyzed, except for the ability to deceive and to lie. All right? If we buy into the lie, what have we done? We've given our energy to that God of this world. If we say no, and we plead the blood, the blood covenant, guess what? Testimony after testimony after testimony in these courts. I plead the blood of, what do you plead? I plead the blood of Jesus Christ. Case dismissed. Happens. Happens all the time. I told the story in the first session, I'll just repeat it. Uh, my sister over in East Tennessee gives me a call. She has a prayer ministry, it's a, it's a worship and praise ministry, a small little uh, place that she calls on holy ground. 
all right? Non-incorporated, uh, no 501c3. People ask, well, what, you know, what is this? It's on holy ground. So anyways, but um, she gives me a call, and, and a, a drug dealer, drug addict, had come in and been set free. Been set completely miraculously delivered free from his addiction. All right. She gets to talking with him. There was a whole bunch of people, and she, she went back on the, on the, on the very, in the very back, and he was just exuberant. All right. He explained to her that he was going to court in, a, in like two days. And he, was, he had already been indicted, and he was going to be sentenced. All right? Excuse me. He had not, I don't believe he had. He was going before the grand jury. And um, so she, he, she, began, she knew a little bit about this, and she began to explain it, and it went right over his head. He had never heard of any of this before. All right? So she gets on the phone with me. She calls me at 1130 at night, and she calls me and says, uh, what do I do? I said, well, there's nothing you can do. He doesn't have time to have that learning curve of about what this is all about. I said, go tell him to give his testimony. So she went and told him. And he said the Holy Spirit had already told him to do that. That's all he knew to do. He goes in before the grand jury and gives his testimony of the miraculous deliverance from, I think he was on heroin or cocaine or something. He had been set free. All of his debts had been paid. Except, guess what? The grand jury ruled. Innocent. Case dismissed, out the window, gone, he walked out. This guy was a drug dealer. They were putting him away for 20-some years or more. So anyways, that's just one testimony. So what is going on, just to, just to uh, uh, say that what they're using is they're using our exemption. The exemption is the same on the W-4 that an employee waives to the corporation. The corporation uses the exemption of the employees and can use that to purchase supplies from their supplier if they're cash strapped. They use what's called a voucher check and they just they use that up to the amount of how many employees they have and uh, up to that limitation. But we are giving our exemption away to the corporations that deceive us that we have to do that. All right? They're not supposed to be taking out our social security or any social security or any taxes or anything. It's supposed to be like you're a, you're you're exempt. So anyways, any questions about this? We'll go over this more later, and we're going to switch gears a little bit here. And um, one of the things that uh, we want to get into a little bit is words and the power of words. We know that words are spirit, as I mentioned on the first session. Words are spirit. Yahshua said, my words are spirit, my words are truth. Another place he said, my words are life. Notice he didn't say my words are good. That's part of the knowledge of, that's a tree of knowledge of good and evil. That's this whole world system. He said my words are life. Okay, so that's outside. That's for living souls, sovereigns created in the image and the likeness of their creator. The creator is spirit. He is a spirit. And those that worship Yah, hallelujah, not Jah, hallelujah, must worship Yah, the great I am, the great I will be, the great I was, is, and will be to come. Okay? He's a spirit, and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now, if he is a spirit, and even the Hebrew people had in their language a word Shaddai. El Shaddai. El is short for Elohim. And you find this at the end of a lot of names where the it's customary in many cultures to to take their deity's name or a portion of the deity's name and put it onto the name of the child. So you find Daniel. Okay? You find Now this is really pronounced because the letter J came in to the English language in the 15th century. So we find it Elijah, but the, that's the transliterated version of Eliyah. El the Almighty is Yah, the I Am, the I Will Be. It's a, it's as Joe shares, it's a, it's a, uh, uh, the causative form of the verb. Uh, Yah is Yahoah, which we get Jehovah, which we also have Yahweh. It's a, it's a cause. It's not a noun. And however you pronounce it, the what came out of Babylon 
or if you look back, you find some people will say that the pronunciation is Yehovah. Isn't that it's a it's an aspirated sound? Yehovah. So I am that I am. Who who is the only creation that's created in the image of the Almighty, in His image and His likeness? Are we the creator? No. Of the fiction, we are. We, but he is the creator of all. All right? So this is a covenant name. We are in covenant with this creator of the whole universe, the seen and the unseen, the, invis the visible and the, and the invisible. And so he goes, this is one of the titles he goes by. So he really saved Moses' butt. He saved his, his rear end big time. Because he had been convicted in the world system, Egypt, for killing that Egyptian, and he had been exiled. So now he's being told to go back and let my people go to the ruler. He goes back, and what's the ruler going to say? What's your name? And what's he going to say? What is, no, what is not my name? I'll say that again. What's your name? No, what is not my name? No, Moshe didn't do that, all right? Moshe went back and said, as he was told to say, I am that I am, I will be that I will be. So he didn't contract, all right? So um, we get into words and we begin to understand that we go by a name, but we are not the name. A name is a noun, a noun is a thing. If I write a letter, let me just uh, review. If I write a letter to you, and I sign the letter, my autograph here, I ask the question, am I on that letter? No. Can I get on the letter? You already know the answer. Yes. How? I take the letter and put it on the ground and I stand on it. Now I am on the letter. That sounds silly, but that is really the case. Now, but I can't get into the envelope go through the postal system, right? So what do I have to do? I have to get off. Now what's on the letter? Ink on a piece of paper. I go by that, all right? So. When we get into the situations that were grabbed sometimes, we were told that one day we may be grabbed and dragged before magistrates. Take no thought in that day and that hour what you're going to say. Why? You're studying. You're studying what to say. But you don't have to remember that if you have a relationship with your Creator. His Holy Spirit lives in you. He will bring all things to your remembrance. All right? So all we know is keep it simple. Keep it simple. They're trying to get you to identify with the name, the thing, the corporate fiction. All right? So we keep it simple, and we ask questions such as, first we go in, and Walter was, was reminding me to say this, the first thing we want to do is one of the things, one of the first things we want to do if we want to take this path is to reserve all of our rights without prejudice, or explicitly without prejudice, all right? Now, the next thing is, don't even skip a breath here. You reserve all your rights, for the record, you reserve all your rights uh, without prejudice, and um, you ask the question, because whoever gives the name first you want to know who you're doing business with. This is the Court of Commerce. You ask them, may I have your name? Now, he's going to try to get you to give your name. He or she is going to try to get you to give your name. All right. Can you make a legal determination about what he's asking or she's asking? No. Say so. No. I mean, say so then. Say, I cannot make a legal determination about what you're asking. Why? You don't know what he's saying, whether that's a corporate fiction or not. You don't know what it is. You know it's not It's not you. You know, some people will ask the question, are you addressing me? May I, if he says, or she says, may I have your name? Or what's your name? Or is your name such and such? Are you addressing me? That's an innocent question. But you want to know, who's he addressing? Are you addressing me? Oh, yes, yes. Oh, I thought you were addressing you. Because he said you. He's the addresser, and me is the addressee. What's on second? Who's on third? Okay. So, now of course that might rile up. You don't want to do that. So the immediate thing is, if you, you go for, may I have your name? 
All right. And then if we, if you know, different people, Joe, uh, Joe has has done this successfully. The judge gave the name. Now the name belongs to you. You have power of attorney. You're the title owner. Didn't you do this? You said, seeing seen that there's that I have the power of attorney, or or, or no, where, there was one judge that wouldn't give the name. He would. He was silent. You asked twice, and uh, for the record, seeing seeing that there is no judge in here, you're appointing yourself judge, and this case is dismissed. Judge goes out. I think that's what he did. Did you not? Walked off. Why? It's for the record. Anything that you say, let's let's back up. This is very important because we know that we're supposed to get the oath of office of that judge to put it into that case. Okay, so. Sometimes it's difficult to get that under the Privacy Act or the Freedom of Information Act is, is difficult. So for the record, what are we saying? For the record of that particular case, if you're going to ask him this, I would put his oath of office into that case immediately. Upon your oath of office. What is his oath of, oath of office? There's a corporate charter that he represents as agent. Okay, he's representing that corporate charter, and the corporate charter says it cannot violate the rights of the people. If you don't invoke that oath of office into your case, guess what? He'll be flying that administrative uh, admiralty flag, the law of contracts. You've already handled that with without prejudice. Anything you say can or, can or cannot be used against you according to Uniform Commercial Code 1-207. And that's why they put it in the very first section. So for the record, upon your oath of office, may I have your name, please? What happens if he doesn't give it? He's not there. Number one, for the record, he's not there. Number two? He left the battlefield. There is no one there that is representing that corporate charter. Is, can there be... An, a, can there be a contract established? Two parties. Valid contract is two parties, right? So, if he does answer, Judge Smith, okay, is that a fiction or is that a living soul? Fiction. Is that his first name? No. no. What's that? Last name? Or we already know first and last name, those are fictions. All right? So, Judge Smith, May I have your name? Judge Smith. Thank him for giving your say, I accept that for value. You have now become the holder in due course, the title owner. All right? So now you go back. Do you have a claim? You can, you can either take it and dismiss it right then. Okay, if he shouts and screams and I'm going to hold you in contempt, all that, you can't make a legal determination. If he tries to force you to make a legal determination, about what he's saying, what is that doing? He's compelling you under coercion and duress to contract with a fiction. What is the fiction? The crown in its judicial capacity. All right? So I cannot make a legal determination. What is happening when you'd make a legal determination? Are you, do you have a license to practice law? And if you don't have a license to practice law within the fiction, what is that? That's a felony, is it not? All right. So you can go for the dismissal, or if it continues, you just say, do you have a claim against me? I guarantee you he's going to say no, because there's only charges for corporations. How are we doing on time? 9 o'clock. We've got about 25, <coughs> 25 minutes left. Then you can ask, do you know anyone that has a claim against me? No. The answer will be no. It's happened time and time and time and time again. The charges, but there's charges upon, well, what, what name is that? Show me the styling. I haven't seen the styling. He lifts it up. There's the docket. There's the styling. It's not me. Well, who are you? Are you addressing me? I go by me. Addressee. They can't win unless they can contract. So one guy, I'll, I'll, re, I'll just reiterate this one story because I think it's so wonderful. It happened down in Florida. And um, a guy didn't know anything about this. He was a believer, strong believer, and he was going through a lawsuit. 
a credit card company was suing him and or suing his corporate fiction and he goes into the court and he's in the peanut gallery his name is called his case is called he stands up and he said already he decided he didn't care what they did to him and he walked in through the bar and he stands there on the defendant side but the court reporter he didn't answer he didn't speak so the court reporter could only say a man walked in so what has to happen the judge has to on the king's bench the administrative arbitrator has to get the acknowledgement of the name of that case so he asked are you such and such and what did he say he lifted his finger and he pointed and said I do not recognize you I do not recognize you according to the plaintiff's attorney I do not recognize you the court reporter I do not recognize you the bailiff I do not recognize you the court clerk and there was silence everyone was waiting the air was just tense the judge didn't speak the guy turned around and walked out walked out of the court building nothing happened two weeks later the plaintiff attorney and the judge gets on the t they get on the telephone and they call the guy remember the guy doesn't know anything he doesn't understand anything and they said we're calling you to have a hearing over the telephone here and to get an interrogatory from you what is that contract, contract to get you we want to get your words uh, so we can use your words against you all right so they began asking him question he said I don't understand what is he saying I do not stand under but he didn't know he was saying I do not stand under he said I do not understand well this and this and this and that no no I don't understand and he kept this up for I don't, for 10 15 minutes and they said we'll get back to you two weeks three weeks pass here comes a letter from the judge from the court the case has been dismissed completely dismissed the plaintiff had no case all right so what are words and look in the Black's Law Dictionary this is a little tidbit here I looked up fictitious plaintiff you see a docket and it says state of and it gives the all cap name all right which is the plaintiff up here right Look under Black's Law Dictionary, fictitious plaintiff. Seventh edition says that, as just summarizing it, it says that a fictitious plaintiff is perpetrating a fraud upon the court. Fifth edition says a fictitious plaintiff is, is, be, is, is in contempt of the court. All right? It means the same thing. So how can the state of Texas, and I've heard, these, I've heard of stories like this, excuse me, we can't begin these proceedings yet. The judge says, why not? Well, the plaintiff is not here yet. Well, what, what do you mean the plaintiff's not here? Of course, the judge knows where this is, you know, where he's going with this because he understands this. What do you mean the, the plaintiff's not here? Well, if the state of Texas is here, I'd like to call the state of Texas to the stand and cross-examine the state of Texas. What are we doing here? All right. So, case dismissed. If it's not dismissed, say. Let me see. How was that given to me? It was given to me something like uh, by the Holy Spirit. It was given to me. Um, I want this case dismissed on the grounds that the fictitious plaintiff has failed to state a claim upon which relief can be granted. There is no claim. How can a fictitious plaintiff give a claim? state a claim a fictitious, a fictitious plaintiff is a corporation a corporation doesn't exist except on a piece of paper that living souls have put that down it can't walk can't talk can't live well people have said well sometimes the judge says oh the prosecuting attorney the police officer or whatever is representing the the plaintiff okay fine I'd like to see the power of attorney given by the plaintiff to the prosecuting attorney allowing the prosecuting attorney to represent the fictitious plaintiff where is the signed power of attorney? A fictitious plaintiff, a fiction cannot sign, cannot walk, cannot talk. Um, that's just a few things. Um, now we're, we're, we'll move on a little bit. How much time we have? 15? About 20 minutes. 20 minutes? Okay. Um, you say about, about recognizing. I do not recognize. What did the guy say when he said, I do not recognize? Um, a friend of mine over in Texarkana, she heard this story. 
she passed it on to me. She said, you're going to be excited about this. She said, look up the word recognize. So we cross-referenced between the seventh edition and the fifth edition of Black's Law. That's what we had at the time. And um, it says, recognize, see, recognizance. You've heard about people signing a personal recognizance bond. What are they doing? They're entering into recognizance with the court. When he said, I do not recognize you, a recognizance is a contract with the crown in its judicial capacity. So he said, I do not contract with the crown, I do not contract with the crown in its judicial capacity, et cetera, et cetera. Where there is no contract, 1938 Supreme Court, Erie Railroad versus Tompkins, where there is no contract, there is no case. And they have to be able to contract. And he said, I do not, who is I? He didn't say I who I was. It wasn't that name on the docket. He just said I, who was declaring this? A sovereign was declaring this. Joe, why don't you come on up here and let's, let's get a, a 20 minute or so flow of, of words. You got some thoughts there? I'll, I'll, I'll pipe in from time to time if the Holy Spirit gives me something. And as you get up off the floor, like a punch drunk fighter, and you say, what happened? You kind of feel that way, don't you? What happened? <clears throat> Here's Mama. And there goes you. And who's standing here? There is the pitcher. There is the catcher. That's why they call it a delivery room. <laughs> What did Mama do? She delivered the baby to who? This guy. On the birth certificate, they've got something waiting here on the other side of this wall in the other room. <clears throat> He's this over here with Mama in the, in the birth room. Like I said, here you come. And she delivers something to this guy. He's a fiction. And that's a thing. And it's going to grow up and it's going to live in a residence, isn't it? Where the thing lives. Right. A thing identified. And so the first thing the policeman's going to ask you when he comes up to your house and he wants to investigate your dog or your grass because it's too high or whatever, is this your residence? Are you the resident here? Are you the thing that resides here? You're not the living thing. Now, unless you know what to say immediately, and that thing is, I'm not a corporation because the statute requires it. Texas state statutes recognize what's happening in this interchange. The first thing you've got to say, I'm not a corporation, and I'm reserving rights under UCC 1207. Only people have rights, corporations, and fictions have privileges granted by the thing that created them, which is typically the state, a subcorporation of the republic which created the corporation. Anyway, not to get too complicated. They say, unless you, your attorney or agent, immediately state, I'm not a corporation, they can proceed as if you are a corporation, and you can never bring it up again. So if you're stopped, is this a social stop officer, or is this official? No, it's official. Oh, well, then I'm required to tell you by law, just like any other burden that the law puts on you. Well, I'm required to tell you by law, I'm not a corporation. So you've got to do them a favor here, because unless you do them the favor, they're begging you, please tell us you're not a corporation because I want to go home to my wife, I've got a barbecue going here, and I don't want to make this a long, trying out procedure. So let them go home, tell them I'm not a corporation. And he leaves. Because he's a fiction and he's got to talk to a fiction. If you tell him you're not a fiction and you're reserving rights under 1207, he's now talking to a real person. Now you've changed the entire ball game. It's you, living soul, talking to him, living soul. If you don't say that, it's him, corporation, talking to you, subcorporation, and you're going to jail. What happened here? <clears throat> the doctor on this certificate is going to sign his name here. The mother is going to sign here. There's the debtor, mama. Okay. 
There's the doctor. And here's you. What are they going to do with this birth certificate dead instrument from the first day? The mother is going to be listed as, ready? Doesn't say mother under that line. That's what it says. Look it up. Get your birth certificate. Get it from the Department of Commerce. Look it up. Mine has my father's signature. I wonder if that gives me any flexibility. No. <laughs> he signed it on the debtor side. Over here, he's just the agent of the transfer. That doctor doesn't sign doctor. He signs... This is what's underneath it. Can everybody read it? Special Department Agent, Department of the Census. That's what's under his signature. Why? Because it says you can't tax anybody in this country unless by enumeration of the census. And here you go. Brand new baby boy, Joe Blow. So He's what not, happened here? There's two births. There's the the living soul birth, flesh and blood body. Born. Yeah, this Born. One. Okay. And then there's the birth of a corporation over here. Because we have unalienable rights that no lien or levy can be put onto our rights. So they have to create a corporation to put the lien and levy on the corporation. And when we identify with this corporation, we don't know that's not us. We identify with it. We say, oh yeah, that's us. Sounds like us looks like us. In our ignorance, we say it is us. Well, we're saying we're a thing, so we've contracted. Now, this is not a lawful contract. Why? A valid contract, we know, has to have two living souls signature on it. All right? So, how do they get the seal? Where do they get the seal? Have you ever seen babies, uh, newborn babies' feet with ink on the bottom and pressed? Here comes the well. Did they was that full disclosure? With me, it wasn't. I didn't know what they were doing. I don't even remember that they did. It. <laughs> and they put the seal on it, saying, they "Gave the seal. The sovereign gave the seal. Okay, this contract. Well, it's not a contract we know is invalid unless there's full disclosure. You know, full disclosure. And over eighteen. True. There's the seal of the baby. They stand you on the contract, so you understood the contract, didn't you? And the informant, footprints. The informant and the special agent of the Department of the, of the Census did not have the sovereign's power of attorney to sign. Well, how do they get that then? Well, I, when my mother and my biological father, <coughs> biological mother, gave me the given name, who became the title owner of the name? Me. Now, I would have to give my biological mother or biological father power of attorney. To sign on my behalf. What did they do when they when they became the informant? They signed on my behalf. So did this character. She's a guardian. She's your guardian. And what immediately happened? Baby comes out. Do they give him to the mother? You give the baby to the nurse. What does she do with it? She runs to the other side of the wall, doesn't she? Baby disappears. What did you do? You gave the rest to that person whoever it was, you don't know. Now what do they do? They come right around and they bring it back to you. And what are they giving you? Remember this one? They're giving you possession, they're, but they're giving it to you. Possession, title, or excuse me, possession, use, time, to age 18 or whatever. But what happened over here? You gave them this. That's what they own. They own you. They own you. That's why they can tax you. You don't think this happens? Remember this little girl down in Florida who was dying on life support? She yeah. was anorexic and her husband was trying to pull the life support system from her. Yeah. <clears throat> well, guess what they filed? If you're one of these, the attorney files an in rem action, don't they? The 
parents wanted to give her last rites of the Catholic Church. You can only give last rites and sacraments to real living people who have religious rights. What do the courts say? Can't do it. Because if he said if he could do it, then he would have recognized she was a living soul. And they couldn't take her life away. But here, they can liquidate her for damages. And he gets the liquidated damages. Whatever's left of her insurance policy, he gets to take home with him. <coughs> That's what happened in Florida. Of course, they've got a lawyer protecting her. Well, Jeb Bush stepped in and he stopped it. He said, start feeding her again. What happened? Well, it happened way back here. And for you Christians out here who think you believe and give evidence that you actually don't, Amen. who was the first unrighteous guy that you ever read about in the Bible? Oh, some of you read it. Was he executed? No, he's protected. What was he protected by? A new covenant. Somebody put a mark on him. His creator put a mark on him. If you look it up in, in uh, Black, or I was going to say Black's Law, in the Strong's Concordance, that's what he put on him. Oath. That's the Babylonian word for a mark. And what kind of a deal did he make? He said, well, now that you're going to be the ruler of all the unrighteous on the earth, because you're the first born, and everybody now is unrighteous beyond you. Allah, your mom, your dad, you killed your brother. You're going to rule all the unrighteous of the world. And if anybody kills you, he should likewise be killed. So he put this on him so you'd see him coming. Okay? <clears throat> What's going on here? Everybody know who that is? Yes. Sure. Comes right out of John, right? First chapter. In the beginning was the Logos. In the Hebrew, it's Dabar. Well, we got an inheritance. And when he came out of Egypt and he said, When I send you into the land, I have promised to your fathers, you will not seek after their God, saying, How did they worship them? Let us go and do likewise. You will not do that to me. I am a jealous mighty one. Well, here you go. Where do you go? You go to this, which is under this. You're going to learn about the single truth in the collected laws of who? Well, let's see. You want to study weather? Okay, you got to study. The Logos of Meteora, the goddess of the weather. You want to study psychology, right? So you got to study. You got to study her logos. Uh, you want to study how to find oil, drill oil wells. Well, you got to have. Gaia logos geology, okay? What's going on here? Now you can't even hold a job unless you've been to those things, can you? And you're going to go, you're going to climb the ladder. You're going to get your BS, which is a what? A baccalaureate, isn't it? And then they actually have services in church for this. Bacchus. <laughs> Bacchus. Look up these words. You find it comes from paganism. MS, PhD. Now, PhD is piled high and deeper. Oh, excuse me. Where, where do these things come from? Well, they came from this this bunch here. Babel, the Babel of languages. And so in subsequent tapes and subsequent things, I'm going to go ahead and my job is going to be to break down these words and show you how everything's been destroyed, including this one. 
But how do you get your inheritance unless you know who your father is? You can't go down the courthouse and ask about that. That is the negative form of Yah. It means may he not be. Sometimes you'll see the, the Messianic will, will spell it this way. Well, let me finish this one. Yeshua. You know what that word means? This may not be the Savior. Jehovah is not a word, folks. He is not the God of destruction, but they've gotten you to believe He is. Look how close. We've got about three minutes here. Look how close Yeshua is. If you look at the, the movie, The Passion of the Christ, they said the word Yeshua. Shua in Hebrew is Savior, Redeemer, Redemption, Salvation. Yeshua is, may He not be this, this Savior, the Redeemer. Okay, so when we say hallelujah, it's very close what Satan is doing. Yah is the Savior. Yah, but they don't want to speak this name. And Yahshua, he brought back the speaking of the name. What is the righteousness here? Just to finish, kind of finish this up here. And you look at John chapter 14, John chapter 17, you see the, the prayer of our Savior. What was he praying? One of the one main things he was saying, let them know that they are one. What does the system want us to do? Declare that we are two. If I am declaring M, I am a fiction, that's two. That's unrighteousness. That's right. If I say I go by the one given appellation, I take my two given names, I put it together with a hyphen, that makes one proper noun. I give, I go by the one given appellation. The family name is something different, okay? But the one given, I'm one. I am the one that goes by the one given appellation. That's righteousness. Anything other than that, anything other than having your IV single is evil. So what have we done here? We brought ourselves under the law that they've written. We've understood the law. We used to be at the top of the pyramid with Yahweh up here. We the people, constitution, government down here and all their little babies. But if you come out from down here and understand them, this is where you are. Under. And you do it by contract. Everything's by contract. So we've made ourselves basically unrighteous by contracting with it. We're our own Adams, aren't we? Adam had the same deal handed to him. Who told you you were naked? Who told you you were a legal fiction? Who told you you were a straw man? A fiction. Who told you you belong in this court? Satan. They did. You're a taxpayer. Who told you that? Who told you you were naked? He gave you the power to be sovereign. We've come under here in contract. Everybody commits the sin of Adam and Eve on a daily basis. So where are we going here? This was broken by this entity with this. And we preach to the choir every Sunday. And then we pray on our neighbors the rest of the week. So there's our blood covenant. We've got one minute here. You paid the, the debts. Why are you still paying taxes? Because you're not part of the sovereign kingdom. So Not get, only did you tell the world and witness to the world, but you also witnessed to him that you're not anymore. Get to know your Creator. Amen. Get to know the covenant that you have with your Creator. It happened 2,000 years ago. You can stand in the way. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate the time. And um, we will, this was to be continued. It never ends. So it, uh, it just continues until he returns.